Since man has been on Earth, the sea has always been an ally. The sea, the great provider. Provider of food, means of transport, and protection. Now, the sea stands ready to provide the most valuable commodity of all. Perpetual, renewable energy. Energy from the ocean. Greenhouse gases and carbon emissions will shortly render the planet uninhabitable. Shortly, that is, not by geological timescales, measured in hundreds of thousands of years, but by historical timescales, measured in generations. Just 300 years ago, we lived on a healthy, balanced planet, where the population was controlled by nature and industrial pollution was unheard of. Today, we live in an unnatural world. Life expectancy is increasing as disease is controlled and our energy requirements have multiplied beyond what the planet can naturally sustain. Oil supplies are dwindling and will soon run out. Natural gas is becoming more and more difficult to find and will become uneconomical to all but the largest industries. Global warming is melting the ice caps, raising sea levels, threatening now to destroy rather than provide. There is no certainty now except the certainty that the sea will determine how millions of lives will be affected in the years to come. As ever, the poor of the planet will bear the brunt of these changes, as they already have in places like Bangladesh, Myanmar and New Orleans. Yet in all of this, there is a great opportunity. Not a magic fix or the only way out of our problems, but a lifeline nonetheless. Time and technology have converged to make possible the extraction from the sea of the limitless energy it can provide. We have the technology to use ocean power as a renewable source of energy. But we must act, and we must act now. We are facing serious challenges in the energy sector. The global economy is set to grow by several folds by 2050. The International Energy Agency estimates a 130% increase in the carbon dioxide emission by 2050 without any policy change. The International Energy Agency's Implementing Agreement on Ocean Energy Systems, known as IAOES, was formed with a focus on helping to solve this problem by enabling commercial production of energy from oceans. The problem is time. We are operating to a deadline. We can't pinpoint exactly where that deadline is, but we know for certain that the longer we take to act, the more likely it is that we will be overtaken by the realities of global warming. The oceans hold energy in numerous ways, and exploiting this energy has attracted the talents of innovators for many years. Today, concrete efforts are mobilizing practical technologies to exploit the world's vast ocean energy resources. The role of these technologies is set to grow steadily in the drive for reliable, cost-competitive and environmentally sound energy. Renewable ocean energy resources fall into five main categories tides, currents, waves, salinity gradients and temperature gradients. A good example of tidal technology in action can be seen at the highly successful barrage across the Rance River in the north of France. Over 40 years old now, this installation generates much of the electricity for the local area. The theory is simple. Potential energy linked to the force of tides can be harnessed by building fixed or floating barrages or other types of construction, either at an estuary or offshore. The tide flows in and drives huge turbines, which in turn generate electricity. Of course, here yeah, we are doing um, renewable energy, which uh, no uh, CO2 uh, emission. And uh, what is more important is that it's a most perpetual energy. Uh, the energy is the tide is due to the rotation of the moon around the, the, 
the Earth and to the rotation of the Earth around the, the Sun. So as long as there is um, this rotation, we can make uh, electricity. And the main difference with uh, other renewable energy is that uh, we can predict when we will be able to make electricity, which is not the case, for example, with windmill. And uh, we are not uh, sensible to, to, to the climate. Uh, it, it can be a flood or, or a dry period. We still uh, produce electricity because the tide is still coming in and coming out. In Korea, construction of the massive Siwa Lake tidal power plant is well underway. It's estimated that it will produce a quarter of the electricity of a typical nuclear power plant. It will save Korea almost a million barrels of oil and 315,000 tons of carbon dioxide every year. Also, due to the continuous filling and emptying of the reservoir, the water quality of Siwa Lake will be significantly improved. Another way of harnessing tidal power is by placing modular underwater turbines directly in the stream to generate power from the flow of water. I see us as being complementary to offshore wind. Um, one of the advantages of our technology compared with wind is that the tides are completely predictable so we can sell a turbine to a utility with a timetable which will tell the utility right through the life of the system exactly how much energy it's going to produce and when it'll deliver it. So in a sense the use of tidal turbines in conjunction with wind turbines would seem to make an awful lot of sense. There are many different types of tidal current technologies. They can be horizontal or vertical axis and can be submerged, floating or fixed to the seabed. The Cobalt Tidal Energy Plant is one such vertical axis turbine. Three upright blades are rotated by the action of the tide and drive a generator placed on a floating platform. This unit has been moored in the Straits of Messina off the Sicilian coast since 2001 and as well as delivering power to the Italian grid, acts as a laboratory for continuous testing and improvement of the system's efficiency. Another source of ocean renewable energy is wave energy. There's a wide variety of devices and systems, each using the movement of waves to harness the power of the sea. These wave energy plants can be shore-based, floating or underwater. The drive, always, is for commercial power. And around the world there are many examples where the movement of waves, or oscillation, is being used to generate electrical energy. In Galway Bay Island, a prototype device known as the Ocean Energy Boy is rapidly moving to its quarter-scale tests and has financial backing from both government and industry. Again, the theory is simple. The up movement of the waves compresses air in a sealed container. The air is then allowed to rush out, driving the blades of a turbine. It's getting more and more difficult to power our economies. The International Energy Agency last uh, December 2007 announced that uh, because of the growth in oil demand for uh, oil in India and China, they could not rule out, and these were the exact words, they could not rule out an oil supply crisis in 2015. So uh, the thing about uh, renewable energies are that they're indigenous to most countries and uh, if you can harness those then you have a direct source of energy supply in your own country. And that is, that is the situation with wave energy for uh, Ireland, Scotland, uh, Portugal, uh, West France, for South Africa, for South America, Australia. All of these countries have the potential for a very, very large energy supply uh, to contribute to their economies. The oceans of the planet are in constant motion, but it's not only motion which can provide usable energy. Statcraft, a Norwegian company, has been actively developing a system of generating power from the sea by using the difference in salt content between river water and the sea. It's a tried and tested technology which is being rolled out to industrial scale. 
Water from rivers has virtually no salt in it. Water from the sea is high in salt. By placing a semi-permeable membrane between the two, fresh water will naturally migrate to one side. By containing the result, volumetric pressure increases, and it is this which is used to drive turbines. It works and promises an immense power source for any or all coastal areas where fresh river water meets the sea. We have been working 10 years now with research on membrane development uh, because membrane is the crucial key to realize this technology. Uh, when we started it, the efficiency was quite poor, but uh, lately we have increased it quite tremendously and today we are at approximately 60% of what we will need to make it commercial viable. We are now building the first ever complete uh, power plant of osmotic power uh, here uh, close to Oslo. We're going to install the membranes that we have and we're going to in fact produce electricity from osmosis, which no one has done before. Perhaps the most innovative use of the sea to generate power can be seen through a process known as OTEC, Ocean Thermal Energy Conversion. Water on the surface of the sea is always slightly warmer than water at depth. Warm surface seawater is pumped through a heat exchanger where a low boiling point fluid, such as ammonia, is vaporized. The expanding vapor turns the turbo generator. The cold deep sea water is then pumped through a second heat exchanger which condenses the vapor back into a liquid, ready to be recycled through the system. But electrical power from OTEC is just one of its benefits. There is also an emerging, emerging shortage of dr drinking water, so OTEC can also help to, to reduce that shortage. So, and even OTEC can help to, to stimulate the production of food as bringing up the nutrient-rich water from, from depth, then having the OTEC plant not only produce electricity, potable water, but also to produce uh, edible food. In a world where more and more communities are finding it difficult to source clean drinking water, power combined with desalination carries many beneficial side effects. Technologies to harness ocean renewable energy are at various stages in development and use, but there still remains the bigger question and the looming problems if we do not embrace it. More than 25 countries are at present involved in developing practical commercial technologies for harnessing renewable ocean energy. It's estimated that the energy available to generate electricity from the ocean is in the same order of magnitude as the combined output of all other methods around the world today. The industry needs hard cash and government and industrial will to support it and drive it forward. Sporadic funding for small projects is no longer enough. It's fossil fuel generation which is doing most harm to the sea actually. The pH of the sea, the acidity of the sea is changing. This is a very dramatically serious factor which isn't well known or taken much account of. The scientists know about it but the public are not very well aware of it. And it is really critical that we find alternative methods of generation. It is a renewable resource. It is uh, uh, derived from solar energy. It's, it's going to be there all the time. It's certainly going to help to reduce our in impact on the, uh, the CO2 problem. And the best thing of all, I think, it is that it is indigenous to many countries. It's an energy supply which they have on their doorsteps. It's like having oil wells on the beach, if you like. And uh, certainly there is a potential then for the energy supply and also for creating jobs. The challenge before us is to take this opportunity while it's still capable of making a real difference to our world. The extraordinary opportunity that is ocean energy. Appropriate government action and public policy instruments are necessary to realize this vast opportunity of ocean power. It is action and it is action now that will unlock this power which is predictable renewable and continuous without any carbon dioxide emission.
predictable, renewable, continuous energy with zero carbon emission. The oceans around us hold the key.